Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another color grading tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at the footage that I've shot probably a couple years ago on Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. And I believe I've shot it raw. Let me take a look really quick. Yep, it's a raw footage. Yeah, I actually thought, you know, I deleted this material a long time ago, but, you know, they've been hiding on a hard drive. So I figured I'm going to do a tutorial on this. So we're going to be turning this into that. How cool is that? And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in this tutorial, and hopefully you guys are going to learn a couple of new tricks today. So let's get started. And uh, I've shot this at approximately 6, maybe o'clock in the morning. The sun is barely going up. Uh, it's still kind of foggy a little bit. I don't know if you can see over the YouTube compression, but you can see a little bit of fog. Anyways, so the first thing I want to do, I probably want to get rid of the noise because the pocket camera is actually extremely noisy. And I think the first thing actually I'm going to do, just remove a little bit of chroma noise. So if I'm going to put 10... You can see I sort of desaturated everything. Okay, so that looks really cool. And for this particular shot, I kind of want to use a little bit of old school film look. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using actually film convert. And I'm going to go to film convert just like this. I'm going to choose the camera. Let's see, Blackmagic design, pocket, film, and I'm going to click apply. Oh, also, I'm going to turn off grain. I'm not going to use any grain, and we're going to do CPU. Okay, perfect. Just by itself, I'm already loving this. I really like how it looks. Everything looks awesome, but I think we can enhance it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this film, film convert. Okay, this one, noise reduction. Okay. So that looks great. It was actually for uh, the Rito contest. We did really cool commercial. You can actually barely see chips over here, but okay. Anyways, enough chatter. So what can I do? Well, I can make this slightly a little bit more dramatic. So let's go again before and after before and after. So that by itself look really cool, but I'm going to convert it to the parallel mixer. And I'm going to call this one trees. Okay, I'm going to play a little bit with the trees over here. And the second one, I'm going to be working with the water. All right, so that looks great. So trees. Let's see, what can I do with trees? I think I'm going to go to Hue versus Luma. Okay, just like this. And I'm going to pick, let's see, what's the average? Uh, let's pick something like this. Okay, and... Okay, I really like this. Let's expand this a little bit. So we have wider range. Okay, that looks great. Also, I'm going to do hue versus saturation. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, let's check it out. Very nice. I really, really like this. Okay, so we sort of added a different colors to this tree. If you look at this before, let me actually turn off this note. It's sort of very uniformed, but after we actually start getting different colors. Obviously, this is tutorial, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if you play around yourself, you can actually find whatever you like in particular. See, okay, that looks great. Right. Okay, perfect. So we we'll already start getting a very interesting look. Also, you can see the grass changed a little bit. Okay, second one I'm going to do with water. And water is going to be very easy, very straightforward. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a custom curve over here. Just like that. Very simple. And we actually have our little duck actors coming in the scene. And for this one, I might give it a little bit of color boost, just like this. And I just want to give you a little fair warning, guys. When you use a color boost in DaVinci Resolve, basically color boost is like a vibrance in Photoshop. But because you're working with video in high compression and all that, 
you have to be very caref careful cranking it up because it's really destroying the picture rather quickly. So when you're using the color boost, be very careful, okay? Because if you zoom in, if you use it too much, you're going to start seeing a very ugly split. So let me see. I don't know if you can see this over here, but you can see the colors actually start causing a lot of artifacts. Anyway, so I'm going to do something around 17 maybe. I don't want to be too greedy. I want to introduce a little bit of feathering. Okay. So, like that looks perfect. Let's see, before and after. Okay. Loving it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to track this. Okay, because I have a little bit of slider movement. I'm not going to be worrying about stabilizing the shot in DaVinci Resolve. I think I'm going to do this in After Effects or Photoshop. Because that was basically the original idea. I'm not a big fan of stabilization in DaVinci Resolve. I'd rather do it later in special program for that. Okay, so like that looks okay, I guess. Our slider shifting a little bit, but that's no big deal. Okay, as you can see, the slider shifting shifted a little bit, and at the end, we actually have a bump. So if I'm going to go back, and I'm going to click over here, frame, I can actually manually adjust whatever I want. So from here, we locked all the key points. And if I'm going to go all the way to the, to the back, I can manually position those things as I want it to be. Okay, just like this. And it's actually going to record that keyframe. And our tracking looks good now. Alright, so water. Let me add a little bit more of blue. In the water, okay, just like that maybe. And I want to make sure that it doesn't look too ridiculous. Okay, let's go in the full screen and check it out. So let's see, before and after. Okay, I really like how it looks. Everything is very nice. We still have a lot of noise problems, but it's a black magic camera, so there's nothing we can do about it. It was very low light, and I was shooting, I think, at f1.8 all the way open. So that looks good. Let's do another thing. Let me do another note. In here, I'm going to call this light. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little circle. And I'm going to track that light right over there. Okay, I'm going to assign this to this little light. We're going to create a little moody picture. Okay. I'm going to give it a little bit of boost like this. Okay, and later down in, for example, After Effects, you can actually add a little bit of flickering if you like. But for now, I'm satisfied with this, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's track this thing backwards. Okay, looks pretty good. And let's track this thing forward. It's going to take a little bit of time. Okay, this thing keep going. Track looks pretty solid. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Now obviously, I can work on making this thing a little bit smaller. Placing it over here. Okay. It's shifting, so let me do a start frame right over here, manually, and we're going to do, oh, it's alright, it's actually pretty much where it's supposed to be. We added just a little bit of glow. Anyways, okay, so that looks great, let's move on. From here, I'm going to go to nodes, and I'm going to do splitter combiner node, and basically what it is, it's RGB. R G and B. Okay. In here, with the regular curve, I can actually manipulate each channel individually. Let me show you. Okay. See? That's pretty much like working with the levels in Photoshop. All right. So 
let me do a little bit of green overall. Then I'm going to go in the green channel. Let's make it a little bit more darker like that with green channel and with blue. Maybe add a little bit of warmth and add a little more blue in the shadows. Okay, perfect. I really like it. Let's check it out again before and after. So now we start getting a very nice moody look. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to combine all this because I'm not going to need it anymore. Okay. Right click, clean up node graph. Everything's nice and aligned. And the next one I'm going to do light. And by the way, guys, I'm just really showing you the technique rather than how I actually would grade this if that would be a real life scenario. So, I mean, I know it takes a long time for one shot and I know a lot of you guys, you know, made a comment about it that, you know, it's pretty ridiculous how some grades too long, but it just for, you know, teaching purposes, it's not always the case how you would really grade it. Anyways, and over here, let me add a little bit of bump of light. Okay, just like that. And possibly, let me maybe warm it up slightly. Okay, that way we have sort of a mysterious forest look. Okay, like that looks fantastic. Now, let me take it away a little bit from the shadows. Very slightly, so it gives more 3D dimension. Okay, just like that. Like that looks perfect. Okay, let's take a look. Before and after. Before and after. So that looks great. And finally, I'm going to do a little bit of vignetting. Okay, just like this. Boom. Very simple, very straightforward. Okay, midtones. Crash it down a little bit, invert it. That way we have our viewer focused on this area where we want it to be. Okay, let me go down a little bit like this. Okay, so let me go into the full screen and let's check it out before and after. So that looks really cool. I really like that look. So we're pretty much done here and what I would do if I would be working on this project, I would actually take it later in the After Effects and I would add a little bit of fog and maybe a little bit other visual effects. But for now, I guess I'm going to do it as a very last note. Let me remove a little bit of noise because it's still very grainy and I don't like that. We can see that there's a lot of grain. So let's, let me zoom in on one solid color. Okay, just like this. And I'm going to use temporal noise reduction. Let's do three frames. Medium. Okay, well, let's keep medium. Let's see. Let's do something about six and ten or twelve. Okay, let me check it out really quick before and after. That looks great. And by the way, the temporal noise really stalling down your computer. So if you guys have the temporal noise, you're thinking of adding it later. What I would do, I would get a couple clips and I would sort of play around with them. What's the best neutral value? And for example, okay, let me save this really quick. And for example, I would delete everything prior to noise reduction. So this is a good noise reduction. And I would grab a still from this, okay, just like this. And I would call it change label noise reduction, okay? So let me go back to the grade. And let's say you have a bunch of clips that you already color graded and you want to add noise reduction in the end. Instead of adding it manually, since this node only contains no, no, uh, noise reduction, I'm sorry, all we can do is right click on it and select a pen node to graph. And it would add itself as the last node. That way, you can add it to multiple clips with just pretty much one click of a button. Okay, so let's go in the full screen again and let's check it out what we've done before and after. Did I push after? There we go. So that looks great. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon.